السلام فقال وعليك السلام يا ولدي ويا شاف أمتي قد أذنت لك فنخل معهما تأت الكسام وأقبل عند ذلك أبو الحسن علي بن أبي طالب وقال السلام عليك يا بنت رسول الله فقلت وعليك السلام يا أبا الحسني ويا أمير المؤمنين فقال يا فاطمة إني أشم عندك راية طيبة كأنها راية أخي وابن عمي رسول الله فقلت نعم ها هو مع ولديك تأت الكساء فأقبل علي عليه السلام نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله أتأذن لي أن أكون معكم تأت الكساء قال له وعليك السلام يا أخي ويا وسي وخليفتي وصاحب لوائي قد أذنت لك فنخل علي تأت الكساء ثم أتيت نحو الكساء وقلت السلام عليك يا أبتا يا رسول الله أتأذن لي أن أكون معكم تأت الكساء قال وعليك السلام يا بنتي ويا بذعتي قد أذنت لك فنخلت تأت الكساء فلما اكتملنا جميعا تأت الكساء أخذ أبي رسول الله بترف الكساء وأوم أبي أده اليمنى إلى السماء وقال اللهم إن هؤلاء يحن بيتي وخاصتي وحامتي لحمهم لحمي ودمهم دمي يؤلمني ما يؤلمهم ويحزنني ما يحزنهم أنا هرب لمن حاربهم وسلم لمن سالمهم وعدو لمن عاداهم ومحب لمن أحبهم إنهم مني وأنا منهم فاجعل سنواتك وبركاتك ورحمتك وغفرانك ورذوانك علي وعليهم وأذهم عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا فقال الله عز وجل يا ملائكتي ويا سكان السماوات إني ما خلقت السماء مبنية ولا أرضا ملهية ولا قمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مضيعة ولا فلكا يدور ولا بحرا يجري ولا فلكا يسري إلا في محبة هؤلاء الخمسة الذين هم تأت الكساء فقال الأمين جبرائيل عليه السلام يا ربي ومن تأت الكساء فقال عز وجل هم أحن بيت النبوة ومعدن الرسالة هم فاطمة وأبوها وبعلها وبنوها فقال جبرائيل يا ربي أتاذن لي أن أحبت إلى الأرض ليكون معهم سادسا فقال الله نعم قد أذنت لك فهبت الأمين جبرائيل وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله العلي العلا يقرئك السلام ويخصك بالتهية والإكرام ويقول لك وعزتي وجلالي إني ما خلقت السماء مبنية ولا نذا منهية ولا قمر منيرا ولا شمسا مضيئة ولا فنكا يدور ولا بحرا يجري ولا فنكا يسري إلا لأجلكم ومهبتكم وقد أذن لي أن أدخل معكم فأنت أذن لي يا رسول الله 
وقال رسول الله عليك السلام يا أمين وهي الله إنه نعم قد أذنت لك فنخل جبرائيل معنا تات الكسام فقال لأبي إن الله قد وهى إليكم يقول إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا اللهم صل على فقال علي عليه السلام لأبي يا رسول الله أخبرني ما لجنوسنا هذا تأتى الكسام من الفضل عن الله فقال النبي والذي بعثني بالحق نبيا واستفاني بالرسالة نجيا ما ذكر خبرنا هذا في محفل من محافل أهل الأرض وفيه جمع من شيعتنا ومهمينا إلا ونزلت عليهم الرحمة وهفت بهم الملائكة واستغفرت لهم إلى أن يتفرقوا فقال علي عليه السلام إذا والله فسنا وفاز شيعتنا ورب الكعبة فقال النبي ثانيا يا علي والذي بعثني بالحق نبيا واصطفاني بالرسالة نجيا ما ذكر خبرنا هذا في محفل من محافل أهل الأرض وفيه جمع من شيعتنا ومهبينا وفيهم مهموم إلا وفرج الله هما ولا مغموم إلا وكشف الله غما ولا طالب هاجة إلا وقض الله هاجة فقال علي إذا والله فزنا وسعدنا وكذلك شيعتنا فازوا وسعدوا في الدنيا والآخرة ورب الكعبة رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين رحمة للعالمين مولانا وسيدنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرض أرواحنا له الفداء ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الإمام علي بن موسى الرضا عليه الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على محمد من جلس مجلسا يحيا فيه أمرنا لم يمت قلبه يوم تموت القلوب صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد Respected elders, brothers, sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and khushali mubarak to you all on the birth anniversary of the eighth star on the horizon of Wilayat Imam Ali ibn Musa Ridha alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. 
it is an honor for me to recite the lecture tonight in memory of this great personality. Last time we, commem we celebrated the birth of his sister, Bibi Masum Ayakum. And in Iran, actually, they designate these days between Bibi Masuma's Wiladat and Imam Raza's Wiladat as Dahye Karamat, the 10 days of Karamat. Because Bibi Masuma is known as Karime Ahl al Bayt. And then Imam Raza Salam as well, his title is Imam al Rauf, the kind Imam, the extremely kind Imam. So, in that sense, they term these 10 days as Dahye Karamat, the 10 days of extreme grace. And they have lots of different jashans and all of these things which celebrate these personalities. Tonight, I want to talk about a few things. First of all, the great ziyarat of our eighth Imam. You all, inshallah, I'm sure most of us here have done his ziyarat. If we haven't, may Allah give us tawfiq to go to Mashhad and perform the ziyarat. If we have done it, then may we go again and again to perform the ziyarat of our beloved Imam. It's a unique ziyarat. Just the grandeur, just the majesty, just the beauty of his haram, really you feel you're in a palace of a king. Really you feel that this is just something out of this world. You'll remember the first time you went there, how awestruck you were seeing the beauty, the mosaics, the calligraphy, the marble, the gold paneling, all of these things really, truly befitting our imam. There are many, many things regarding his ziyarat that are reported from people that perform his ziyarat. There are too many to mention, but maybe just one here or one there we can mention tonight before we go on to the main topic. One of the khadims of the haram. Khadim is who? Khadim are those people, you see them, for example, they walk around, they wear a particular type of uniform, they have a badge, they usually carry around the multicolored feather dusters. And these are the khuddam or khadims. Khadim means like servant or one who serves at the pleasure of the imam. One of these khadims narrates. He says, today I'm a khadim. How I became a khadim is an interesting story. He says, back in the day, I was a mashhadi. I used to live in mashhad. But I would rarely ever go for the ziyarat of Imam Rida. I was almost, you know, like not really caring that even in my own city, there's a ziyarat. And what happened was that I was living a wonderful life. I was very wealthy. My business was flourishing. We were one of the rich families of Mashhad. I would very rarely go for Imam Ziyarat. He would hardly be in my mind. Yes, I would pass by his haram. I would see it. I would go to my workplace. All of these things were happening. But really, it didn't really affect me much. He says, one day I found out I got cancer. Very unexpectedly, I was diagnosed with cancer. I said to myself, I'm rich. Let me go. I'll find a cure. I went outside of Iran. I went here, there, everywhere. I consulted doctor upon doctor. I consulted them. They all looked at me and they said, sorry, there's nothing we can do. I said, never mind. I'll go, you know, to the best doctor in the world. I found a doctor in America. I said, I can afford it. I'm rich. I went there, I was prepared to pay all the fees and all the charges and everything. I met this doctor, he said to me, I'm sorry, you only have a few months to live, there's nothing I can do. Then it dawned upon me that money can't buy you a cure. He says, I came to this realization and something happened inside me. I, my attitude changed, my personality changed. I came back to Iran, I came back to Mashhad, but now I was a different person. All of a sudden, I realized that, you know what? My heart was very soft. I was less harsh with people. I was nicer to the children in my family. I was nicer to my relatives. I was, I was nicer to my mother. And I resigned myself to this fate. And I said, you know what? I've only got a few months to live. Why should I keep a grudge with anyone? Why should I be harsh with anyone? His mother comes to him one day. She says, my son, one thing I request you. Go for the ziyarat of Imam Rida. He says, I wasn't bothered still, even though I, you know, I've been diagnosed with cancer, I've only got a few months to live, what not. He said, I still wasn't really bothered. But I said to myself, where, how will I now disappoint my mother and hurt her feelings in these last few months of my life? I didn't want to hurt her feelings. I didn't want to bother her. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. 
I didn't want to bother her. I didn't want to hurt her feelings. So I said, okay, fine, whatever. Let me go. So he says, I walked into the haram. And he said, I told the people who were with me because I was ill and, you know, I needed people to support me and help me in case I become tired and whatnot, fatigued. So I told them, let me stop and do wudu. So we stopped. We did wudu. Then I walked into the main uh, indoor part of the haram. Haram is massive, yeah? Haram, sometimes when we take people, uh, if people are with us and it happens to be that we are with a group or something like that, we do this haram tour. Uh, people say, like, how long will it take? 20 minutes, 30 minutes? I'm like, well, you know, reserve three or four hours, inshallah. Maybe we'll do, like, 75% of the haram tour. If you know actually what is in the haram, it's, like, mind-blowing. The people that are buried and the places that you go to and the things that you can see in the haram itself is mind-blowing. Anyway, so he says, I walked into the main indoor area of the haram. And ahead of me was the zari. But I could not see the zari. I could see actually the imam himself. And I, begin, I began to tremble. And the people around me, they couldn't see what I was seeing, but they knew something was happening. And I looked at the imam himself. Now, what does that mean when he sees the imam? This is called, uh, in Islamic terminology, mukashafa or kashf. Two words basically mean the same thing. Mukashafa or kashf which is like unveiling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows you something that, you know, really you shouldn't usually be able to see it. But he unveils something in your soul. He opens what we call dilki anke, the, the, the eyes of the heart, and you see something. He said, I could see the imam. And imam started to walk towards me. And imam extended his hand. And he said, here, here is your shifa. Here is your cure for what you've been going around the world, consulting different people for. Here is your shifa. And then he turned and he started to walk away. And I said to myself, no, I have to thank him. So I called him. I said, Ya Abu Hassan, O oh Imam Rida. And he wouldn't look back at me. He didn't turn. He didn't, as if he didn't hear me. And then it came to my mind that I've heard people say, that when you want something from Imam Radha, you have to give him a very special qasam. There's one qasam, there's one way of addressing him which he will never deny. You have to say, Bihaqke Javadat. I give you the qasam of your son, Imam Muhammad Taqi Al Jawad. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa When you say Bihaqke Javadat with the right or with the qasam of your Jawad, then he'll answer. So it came in my mind and I said, Agha bihaqqi jawadat. With the right of your son Jawad. And he turned around. And I said, Agha, don't go like this. You've given me something I want to appreciate. I want to kiss your hand. He said, no. You don't kiss my hand. Because I didn't do it for you. I did it for your mother. When you go home, kiss the hand of your mother. It's like you've thanked me. And today that person is a khadim in the haram of Imam Radha alayhi salam. May Allah give us tawfiq to go for mashhad, the ziyarat, the bargah of Imam Radha alayhi salam is there. We pray for the people of Iran. May Allah protect them, protect the Islamic Republic of Iran, open the ways of ziyarat once again, once it's safe, inshallah, with salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now, Tonight, I want to talk about two things from our eighth Imam. One is in the form of a saying of the Imam, which we'll come to later. And before that is one of the written advices of the Imam. You may have heard this personality's name before, Shah Abdul Azim Hassani. Have you heard that name? Most of us, when we go to Iran, probably the first time we go, we do the ziyarat of Shah Abdul Azim. This is located where? In Ray, Tehran. Ray, very old city, and now it's incorporated within modern day Tehran. So that place is called Ray, but it's like now a suburb of Tehran. So you go there, and there are, uh, there's a market, there's a haram, and all of these things are there. There's a graveyard next to his haram as well. He is Hassani, meaning he's from the progeny of Imam Hassan al Mujtaba, alayhi salatu wasalam. Allahumma salam. 
So there are four generations actually between him and the second Imam. He is direct descendant of Imam Hassan. And this Shah Abdul Azim, okay, Ab his name is Abdul Azim. Shah we put on because it means like king. So this Shah Abdul Azim, he was very fortunate. He's in this unique category of a few people who saw multiple Imams, like Jabir ibn Abdullah Ansari. This Shah Abdul Azim Hassani saw four Imams, very seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth Imams he saw. And he was no ordinary personality. He was a very great personality. How do we know this? We know this because of the way the Imams addressed him. They addressed him in one of the communications, they address him as Ya Ali Allah, O Wali Khuda, O Wali of Allah. And in also another one, they call him Abul Qasim, not even by his name, but out of great respect in Arabic, when you want to give someone respect, you don't call them by their names, you call them by their title, Ya Abul Qasim. So he was very highly regarded. Now, today we don't have time to go into his history. Maybe one day, inshallah, if I get a chance, I'll go into the history of Shah Abdul Azim himself. Imam, our eighth Imam writes a letter to Shah Abdul Azim. This is where I want to spend some time right now describing this letter and what it contains. Imam gives a number of pieces of advice. These are all akhlaqi advice. We'll go through them one by one very briefly until we come to the fifth one, which is where I want to spend the most time. Imam says to this companion, this Abdul Azim. He says, Ya Abdul Azim, Ablig anni awliya iya salam wa kullahum. O Abdul Azim, give my salams to my Shias and tell them. Now, brothers, sisters, when I'm reading this letter, I want you to really concentrate. You'll rarely see, or I've rarely seen, such strong worded statement from any imam okay it's a very strongly worded statement like there's no black and there's no gray area here it's very very strongly worded so what he says is he says give them my salams and tell them tell them what and la yaj'alu shaytan ala anfusihim sabila the first thing tell them that they should not allow shaytan a pathway to reach them now, this is different than saying, I advise them not to sin. I advise them not to do gibbat. I advise them not to steal. He doesn't say any of that. He says, close the door of shaitan. Don't even get to a point where you're tempted to sin. Close the door of shaitan before you're even tempted to sin. Now, this can be different for different people. Maybe one person, his issue may be backbiting. So he has to close that avenue of shaitan. He should not be in a position where he's backbiting. Maybe someone is prone to anger. He has to close and make sure he's not in a situation where he can show anger. Maybe someone else, it's, for example, I don't know, making fun of others, insulting others. So close those avenues to yourself. Is it your eyes? Is it your ears? Is it you listen to bad things? Is it you look at bad things? So every individual must have care for himself and work out where it is that shaitan is able to affect him. This is the first advice. I advise them, no, tell them not to allow shaitan a way to influence them. Number two, wa murhum, order them. Doesn't even say advise them, doesn't even say I advise them, it doesn't even say I'm doing nasihat, I'm doing a darkhast, I'm doing this and that. No, order them, command them. Bisidq fil hadith. To be truthful in speech. I'm not going to spend much time here because the points I want to make are after this. Wa adail amana. Order them to be trustworthy with trusts. Someone has trusted you with something. Could be money, could be property, could be a belonging, could be they lend you something, could be confidential speech. I tell you something, your brother, don't tell anyone this. But we always think, if I only tell one more person, it's okay. I don't know why. We say to someone, don't tell anyone this. <laughs> but then we tell one person, we say, ah, I'm only telling you. 
Adail Amana. Be trustworthy in your trusts and in what you have been given to look after. Wa murhum and order them. Bis sukut. Ya Allah. A ekti jopar ame amal karsu. If we take action on this one thing, I think, you know what, so many sins will go. Order them to be silent. Control the tongue. Don't talk too much. Be careful what you say. I don't have time to go into this. And tell them to leave, I don't know what, how, how I would say jidal, it's like jagra. Leave jagra. Tell them not to go into debating and jagras and this and that and you said this and I said this and you did this and I did that. Order them to lay off jidal. Where do we find these jagras? We find them in many places. One of them, which is particularly, uh, you'll see it a lot. I mean, this has just come into my mind because I'm seeing a uh, few brothers there. We've got a football uh, tournament on the weekend. Inshallah, I'm sure you'll all pray that my team will win, inshallah, I'm sure. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. But you find this in sports and these things. You find this is non-ending, especially in football. I don't know why. Handball, no, it was ball to hand. Shoulder barge, no, it was a push. Slide tackle, no, I blocked. You know, non-ending. And usually it doesn't really end up in any kind of resolution. You just all feel bad afterwards anyway. You know, you argue and you feel bad afterwards. But whatever it may be, jidal, these jagras, these to and fro, verbal. And then he says, wa ikbali ba'dihim ala ba'ath. Tell them to visit one another, spend time with one another. Wal muzawara, to do ziyarat of one another. Why? When we meet, when we talk, when we exchange views, many things happen. Business flourishes, contacts flourish, we help one another, marriages flourish, we know about one another, we know about who's in our homes, we know about so many different things. So to get together and to, you know, exchange views, فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ قُرْبَةٌ إِلَيَّ Imam says, if they do all this, then really they have become close to me. And then Imam starts to mention the main point which I want to get to. Wala. Yashgalu anfusahum bitamziki ba'dihim ba'dan. Imam says, and tell them they should not engage in doing tamzik of one another. What is tamzik? This is the key point. All of that that we've mentioned in its own place. Imam says, tell them not to do tamzik of one another. Tamzik. Tamzik is what? In Arabic, we have this word mazq. Musk means to tear something or to rip apart something. This is musk. Imam here is telling Shah Abdul Azim to tell all of us, all his awliya, all his shias. Tell them not to offend one another, hurt one another, dishonor one another, destroy one another. Tell them not to do this. Why? What happens if we do this, O Imam? Now hear, please is where I want to emphasize the strength and the severity of Imam's tone in the next few lines. With salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So Imam says, tell them not to hurt one another, dishonor one another, rip each other apart. For inni alaytu, I swear to myself, ala nafsi, annahu man fa'ala dhalik. Whoever does this and hurts a friend of mine from amongst my friends, I pray to Allah to punish him in this world with the most painful punishment. I, I haven't heard such words usually. You don't get this kind of harsh tone from an imam that I pray to Allah to punish him with ashad al adab, with the most painful punishment. And in the hereafter as well, he will be from amongst the losers. To hurt a mu'min, to dishonor a mu'min, to violate the haqq of a mu'min, 
Look at the words of the Imam. وَأَرِّثْهُمْ Imam goes on. He says, and tell them one more thing as well. Allah will definitely forgive the good ones amongst my Shias. And he will definitely overlook the wrongdoing of the evil ones of my Shias. Except in two cases. إِلَّا مَنْ أَشْرَكَ بِهِ Except for the one who does shirk, associates with God. Or if he hurts a friend of mine from amongst the friends of mine. If he does shirk or if he hurts another mu'min, Allah will not forgive. But Imam is Ra'uf, Imam is Kareem, Imam is all. Yes, he definitely is. But don't take it for granted. Don't think that whatever happens, everything is forgiven, nothing will be forgiven. Come on. We have to be more mature than this. Oh, Azmara lahu su'an. Even if he conceals some badness in his heart, maybe he doesn't even show it. Maybe you'll never know that I have a bad feeling towards you. But I have this bad feeling in me. Imam says this is also amongst the categories that we are talking about. Now, Imam says, however, if you've done this, now, People may be thinking, well, you know, we have some negativity towards mu'mineen. We may have hurt someone in the past. We may have hurt someone's feelings. We may have done this tamziq of someone. We may have dishonored someone. Now what do we do? No, no, don't worry. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. Imam says, fa inna Allah la yaghfiru lahu hatta yarja'an. Allah will not forgive until he repents and stops this practice. And turns back from this practice. You have a habit, for example, of hurting people, saying bad things to people, whether that's in family, amongst siblings, amongst brothers, amongst sisters, amongst mu'mineen, amongst jamaat people, it doesn't matter. If you have this habit, make an intention that I'm going to stop and I'm going to return back from this habit. Wa illa. And what if you don't? What if you continue? Then what? Imam says, if he doesn't turn back from this, the light of faith will be extracted from his heart. So even, you know, it will affect your faith. He will leave my wilayat. He will not qualify for my wilayat anymore. And he will leave the wilayat of all of us, the Ahlul Bayt. وَعَوْضُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكِ And Imam says, and I seek refuge from this, from, for him. Imagine, to hurt a mu'min, to dishonor a mu'min, there are grave, grave consequences. I have been trying in my last few lectures from Mahi Ramadan onwards to keep on emphasizing the importance of haqqun nas, the rights of people. Not violating the rights of people, being very careful when dealing with people. Unfortunately, people are not as nice as Allah. With Allah, we have a lot more hope that we can, you know, get away with more with Allah, if I want to put it in those terms. With people, you cannot, unfortunately. People are more hard-hearted. Whether they forgive or not is complicated. With Allah, it's very easy to deal with Allah. With people, it's very difficult to deal with them. So, the Imams, it seems, the Imams, it seems, have linked their heart with the heart of the Shias. Somehow, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, their heart is linked with the heart of other Shias. A man comes to Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam. Imam says to him, why did you dishonor me? A man comes to the sixth Imam. Sixth Imam says to him, why did you dishonor me? He says, Imam, I've just met you. How did I dishonor you? Imam says, do you remember that day you were in Johfa? You know, Johfa, the Mikat. You were in Johfa. One of our Shias asked you to help him with transport. He asked you for a lift and you refused. You dishonored me when you did that. Imagine. Now, to what extent do we have to be careful with our hurt and our effect on other people? You'll be amazed. One is actions, of course, that's included. One is speech, okay, that's included. Even to the extent that your glance, your nigah, 
your glance has an effect. Look at this hadith. Man nazara ila mu'min, whoever looks at another believer, nazaratan in a way, yukhifuhu biha, that he looks at him in a way that he scares him. Akhafahu Allah Ta'ala. Allah will scare him on the Day of Judgment. There are so many different things in this category of hadith that is too many to mention tonight. However, I think this message of Imam Rida salam, to Abdul Azim Hassani, which has now been passed to us through the writing, is enough, inshallah. Allah protect us all from hurting other people, from being the subject of the uh, du'as of the Imam against us, inshallah. May he keep us all united, all very much united in the wilayat of Ahlul Bayt alayhim wasalam. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. This was the first thing. The second thing which I wanted to mention is now not a written communication of Imam. This is now a verbal communication of the Imam. There is a category within hadith. You know, when we find so many hadith about a particular subject, we know that it's a very serious subject. When we find again and again, Imam after Imam, they mention one particular thing again and again repeatedly, we know how valuable and how important it is. So there's a hadith of the eighth Imam, which I want to get to. However, before that, let me give you two hadiths, one from the sixth Imam, first of all. And please listen very carefully and don't misquote me afterwards. This has to be understood properly, inshallah. Imam Jafar Sadiq says, Allahumma salam. He says to his companion Fudayl, he says, Tajlisuna wa tuhaddithun. Do you sit with one another and do you relate our hadith with one another? He says, Naam, Joel to Fidak. Yes, I do. May I be sacrificed for you? Qala inna tilkal majalis uhibbuha. He says, Indeed. These kinds of gatherings, I love them. Imam says, do you sit together and do you discuss our affairs? He says, yes. He says, I love these types of gatherings. Man ahya amrana. May Allah have mercy upon the person who does this kind of thing, who enlivens and keeps alive our memory, our fazail, our sayings, our history, the things which happened to us our memories, our incidents. May Allah have mercy upon such a person. Ya Fuzail, O Fuzail, man dhakarana, whoever remembers us, O dhukirna indahu, or we are mentioned in his presence. Whoever remembers us, or we are mentioned in his presence. فَخَرَجَ مِنْ عَيْنِهِ مِثْلُ جَنَاحِ الذباب. And maybe through this remembrance, either it's the Masaib of Ahlul Bayt, or it could be Azmat of Ahlul Bayt, could be the magnificence of Ahlul Bayt. Either one, it doesn't matter. You hear something about Ahlul Bayt, you feel honor, and maybe a tear comes from your eye. What size of tear? Does it have to be gushing tears that it fills your handkerchief? He says, no. He says, even if something comes out of your eye, the size of the wing of a fly. Janahid Dubab, the size of a wing of a fly. In other words, the most smallest amount. Allah will forgive his sins. How many sins? Even if the sins are more than all the froth and from of the seas. One mention of Ahlul. Bait, you have a kind of internal feeling, maybe you shed a tear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives your sins. Many people will say, how can this be? So are you saying that someone who sins? No. We know all the other terms and conditions of this, of this forgiveness. However, what this hadith is trying to say is that this has hopefully internally awakened you in such a way that now you become a much better person. So therefore you qualify for the Forgiveness of Allah. Second hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. 
Rasulullah says, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ رَوْزَةً مِّنْ رِيَادِ الْجَنَّةِ When you see a garden from the gardens of paradise, then make sure you go and benefit. Ya Rasulullah, they said, O Prophet of God, وَمَا رَوْزَةُ الْجَنَّةِ What do you mean when we see a garden from the gardens of paradise? What does that mean? Rasulullah says, مَجَالِسُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ the gatherings of mu'mineen are gardens from the gardens of paradise. Here, Rasulullah does not even say about hadith or our affair or our matter or religious talk. He says simply sitting and spending time with mu'mineen is a garden from the gardens of paradise. Third hadith from the personality of tonight, Imam, Musa, Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha alayhi salam. Man jalasa majlisan, whoever sits in a gathering, yuhya fihi amruna, in which our affairs are enlivened. Again, affairs enlivened means we talk about Ahlul Bayt, we describe Ahlul Bayt, we mention Ahlul Bayt, we describe their sayings, like our gatherings here. You know, our elders were very wise. MashaAllah. You know, may Allah bless our elders. May He shower His blessings upon them. They were very wise. The fact that they established these majalis is truly one of the most wisest things you'll see in our culture. They came up with these majalis. They came up with these gatherings. They made sure that it was in our calendar every wiladat, every wafat, every shahadat, muharram, arba'in, ramadan, all of these things are commemorated and celebrated properly. Why? Because in those gatherings, these things are discussed. Ahlul Bayt are mentioned, and these become the gardens of the gardens of paradise. So, Imam is saying what? Manjalasa majlis, and whoever participates in a gathering, yuhya fihi amruna, in which our affairs are enlivened and brought to life. Lam yamut kalbuhu, his heart will not die on the day when all other hearts will die. Because why? Allahumma salatu Why is his heart not going to die on the day when other hearts will die? Because here he made sure his heart was kept alive. Those who don't have this kind of gathering, who don't have this kind of constant reminders, awakening, mo'iza, wa'az, reminders, nasihat, and these things really, their hearts are dead, dying maybe, but they're not alive in terms of what the Ahlul Bayt class alive. So, one of the real fears of the pandemic amongst many people was, okay, we have the pandemic and, you know, really, I'm so tired of talking about the pandemic, but this is a point which I have to mention. People were, you know, concerned that Everyone's going to be so used to Zoom and other platforms that how will we get people back to the mosque? And has it proven true or not? Most likely, I'm sorry to say with a heavy heart, most likely we'll have to say it's proven true. It has been difficult. It has been difficult. There was a thought that once we, inshallah, open and we have some kind of gathering, we will be inundated. We were thinking, how will we turn people away from the mosque? Because we only have limited numbers. How will we turn them away? There'll be too many people. But alas, it has not happened. Brothers, sisters, we're not talking about those people who are, who have health concerns, who have elderly people, who are genuinely unable to come. No, Allah bless them and cure them and give them long lives, inshallah. What we're talking about is, for example, when we are in a habit at the moment, some people, and I'm giving myself the first reminder here. Some people, maybe, they're in the habit where mosque is just not a factor anymore. This is what I'm trying to say. Mosque is just not a factor anymore. You, we don't think about mosque. Like when we go through our week, it doesn't come in our mind that there is such a thing called mosque and Thursday night is there and the Kumail and the night of forgiveness and we have to beseech Allah and we have to pay homage to Imam Hussein. We have to remember our marhumin. Juma is there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Fadarul Bay, leave your work, come to Juma, come to prayers. It that's the problem where we don't even factor it in anymore. 
excuses, factors, important things. Yes, absolutely. Take care of your health, take care of your elders, take care of the vulnerable. Definitely. But when it doesn't even factor into our lives anymore, here I'm very sorry, with a heavy heart I have to say, we should be concerned. We participate in many things. We participate in social gatherings. Alhamdulillah, good to be with other mu'mini. Sports, alhamdulillah, sports seem to be, you know, bursting with uh, attendees. And so it should be. We're very glad that community sports are flourishing. But surely the core of our identity is love and wilayat of Ahlul Bayt. It has to be the core. Everything else has to service this core element of a mu'min. That ihya e amr to enliven the affairs of Ahlul Bayt. This has to be the central part. Everything else can fit around, no problem. If it's jayas, alhamdulillah. But this is the core. So if it's possible, mu'mineen, let's try our best. Regardless of things like, I know there are challenges, could be parking is an issue, access is an issue, the route of how to get there is an issue, registrations and the timing of it is an issue. Regardless of all of that, if we can try our best to be better planned, to factor it in on a weekly basis that actually there is one more thing in my life called mosque and imambara and masjid and namaz and majlis and lecture, then inshallah we can qualify for this ihya e amr of Ahlul Bayt where they have said whoever enlivens our affair will, his heart will not die on the day that hearts will die. Ayatollah Khamenei has spoken against this very much. He says be very careful this is going back a few months now. He says, be very careful. He calls it Jange Narm, soft war. He says, be very careful. There's a soft war which is being enacted. He says, take all your precautions. Fulfill your medical precautions, your hygiene precautions, your doctor's precautions. Fulfill all of that. But he says one thing. He says, be in asani. With, you know, little effort, do not allow these things to go out of your hands. Do not give up your gatherings. Do not give up your majalis. Do not give up your azadari. Do not give up your celebrations of Ahlul Bayt. Do not give up your namaz e jamaat. Do not give up these things very easily. He says, hold on to them as much as you can with all the precautions and hygiene and everything like that. Jalo, I think enough has been said on this. Let us finish with prayers and duas. Oh Allah, bless our marhumeen. Keep our ulama always with us for as long as possible. Give a long life to our marja'i waqt, Agai Sistani, our other maraja. Keep them in your shade of mercy and give them all a long life. O oh Allah, unite our community at all times. See us through this pandemic in the best possible way. O oh Allah, protect the Islamic Republic of Iran. Allow us to go back to Mashhad as soon as possible. O oh Allah, bless all the mu'mineen and mu'minat wherever they may be. Let us remember all our marhumin with al-Fatiha. میں نعت سے شروعات کرتا ہوں 
میں اس طرح سے ہوں یا رب تیری سنا کے بغیر کہ جیسے جی نہیں سکتا کوئی ہوا کے بغیر قسم خدا کی ادھوری کتاب لگتی تھی بیاز شیر مجھے نات مصطفیٰ کے بغیر وسیلہ نبی کا نہ ہو تو لگتے ہیں دعا سر کے بغیر سر دعا کے بغیر فقیر شاہ نجف ہوں کوئی مزاق نہیں ہمیشہ ملتا ہے مجھ کو میری سدا کے بغیر سکون ملتا نہیں مصطفیٰ کو اور کہیں ہے شہزاد یہ عالم تیری ودا کے بغیر دلیل کو نہیں تھی خدا کے ہوں کی فات محس نئے نوستفا کے بغیر دلیل کو نہیں تھی خدا کے ہوں کی علی و فات محس نے کے بغیر سزا کے بعد جزا ہے اگر تو اے باعز کیسے مل گئی ہر کو جزا سزا کے بغیر اس طرح سے ہوں یا رب تیری دعا کے بغیر سب اللہم صلی اللہ محمد و آل محمد ایک مرتبہ اور دوں گی صلی اللہ محمد تو مولا رضا علیہ السلاۃ والسلام کی منقبت اور انشاءاللہ ایسا دنیا میں کوئی بندہ رحمان نہیں جس پہ سلطان خراسان کا احسان نہیں ایسا دنیا میں کوئی بندہ رحمان نہیں اس طرح تیری کریمی پہ یقین ہے مجھ کو اس طرح تیری کریمی پہ یا 
रखी है मुझको जैसे तो ही ईद में शक का कोई मकान नहीं वो गई फेक्ट मेरी मद है रजा की खातिर वो गई फेक्ट मेरी मद है रजा की खातिर जहाँ जिबरील के जाने का भी इमकान नहीं शेख जी मग है रजा सुन के ये है रसी शेख जी मद है रजा सुनके ये है रात कैसी क्या कभी तुमने सुनी सूर रहमान नहीं तेरे दरबार में बजती हुई नो कसम तेरे दरबार में बजती हुई नौबत की कसम कम अजानों से तेरी जीत का ऐलान नहीं ऐसा दुनिया में कोई बंद रहमान नहीं ये थर्टी सेकंड्स में सिर्फ किसी ने मुझे पंजाबी कहा था तो ये सराय की मैं इसको थर्टी सेकंड में सिर्फ अगला हासिल करूँगा हो पढ़दा कसीदा हक दे वली पढ़दा कसीदा हक दे वली रल के सुना वो रल के सुना वो हो नारायलीदा पर्दा कसी जहरा द शोहर पीर द पीरे मैं क्या डसा कितना अमीरे सरा तू अरशे उलातल सरा तू अरशे उलात सारे दसारा सारे दसारा हो रख बायलीद पड़दा कसीदा चलो Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh today is Tuesday, the 22nd of June 2021, 11 Zilkad 1442. The announcements are as follows. Thursday 24th June, program will start at 8 p.m. with Surah Yasin, lecture by Dr. Sayyid Rehan Naqvi on the topic Leaving the Darkness Behind, Seeing the Light in the Darkest Hour. And we'll end with Maghrib Ain Salah. Friday 25th June Dua Nudba will begin at 12:40 p.m. followed by Juma Khutba at 1:09 p.m. here at Al Zahra Center by Maulana Sayyid Muhammad Rizvi. Thursday marhumin names. The deadline for sending the marhumin names is Tuesday before the Thursday online program. Please send them to admin at hujjat.org. All requests for a station of Qasida, Munajat, Marthia, Matam and any other recitation and also for the Mahe Muharram recitation requests 
please email your request to recite at hujjat.org. Please join me in reciting five times Amma Yujibu for all those who are ill for their quick shifa. Allahumma salla ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amma Yujibu al-Muthtarra idha da'ah wa yakshifu su. أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد and now for the most important announcements for tonight. The Jamaat takes note of the following engagements. Sister Sabiha, daughter of Musaddiq, Muhammad and Naila Jaffa, to Brother Abbas, son of Kazim Ali and Zakira Alidina of Leicester. Sister Fatima, daughter of Mukhtar and Mansura Manji, to Brother Mazhar Ali, son of Mahboob and Farhana Gulam Hussain. Sister Buraiha Fatima, daughter of late Muhammad Iqbal and Munira Lalji, to Brother Mehdi, son of Muhsin Abdul Rasul and Tasneem Khaki of Birmingham. Sister Zainab, daughter of Yusuf Kasmali and Sabra Gulamali, to Brother Gulam Hussain, son of Muhammad Rafiq and Nushrat Kesvani. The Jamaat congratulates all the parties on this happy occasion. Please recite aloud salawat. I'd like to introduce the Vice President of Hujjad Jamaat to say a few words. Please welcome him with the salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Bismillah <clears throat> ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Mawlana Sahib. My dear elders, brothers and sisters, salamun alaikum. Anna Kushali Mubarak to everyone. I stand before you today in excitement to offer to this community and to the community something that probably has never been done before. Alhamdulillah, our well-wisher, Muslim Bhai Kanji of Cruxton Travel has secured courtesy of Qatar Airways, which you know is one of the leading airlines of the world, two business class tickets to any Qatar Airways destinations in Africa or Middle East from any UK airport. Yes, you heard me right. It's business class tickets and that also two of them. We are going to do a raffle to these tickets which is now live on our website. You can head there now. Each ticket is only 10 pounds. However, let me tell you a little secret. The more tickets you buy, the better the chances of winning them. Like we say back home, Sone pe suhaga dekho. For the non-Urdu speakers, I mean icing on the cake is that all proceeds from the raffle will go towards the Hujjat Center refurbishment. So the money you spend on this raffle goes for a noble cause and the prize you have the chance to win, wow, is a once in a lifetime experience. So as the world is opening up slowly but surely and travel restrictions are being lifted, whether you're planning a trip a trip for Umrah or Ziyara. Maybe you're thinking of a holiday for, uh, to go to South Africa or East Africa back home. This raffle could be your key to those destinations and to travel in the style and luxury of business class. I will echo what Molana said, as today is the Khushali of Badshah of Khorasan, let me take this opportunity to tell you a bit about Iran. Allah has blessed Iran in all aspects. Besides the two glorious cities of Mashhad and Qum, which some of us have been blessed to visit, do consider Iran as a holiday destination too. 
it has a lot more to offer than many of other destinations in the region. Cities like Tehran, Isfahan, Tabriz, Kish Island, etc., etc., the list goes on. The recent addition of comfortable trains from Mashhad to Qum and Tehran is something not to be missed. So make Iran your next destination. Visit the Haram of Imam Raza alayhi salam in Mashhad and, and Bibi Masumai Qum in, in Qum, and then spend a few days exploring what Iran has to offer. Finally, I would request all of you to get these raffle tickets and get as many tickets as possible. Inshallah, on Eid day, we will be announcing the lucky winner. This way, you will be supporting Hujjat towards its refurbishment and also try your luck too. Remember, this raffle is open to one and all. You could be in England or anywhere in the world. If you win this, you can travel from any UK airports to any Qatar Airways destinations in the Middle East and Africa. However, as always, terms and conditions apply. So the summary is business class tickets for two. Raffle is now live on our website that is www.hujjat.org. Sign up now and you, and you, or even you, could be the lucky winner. Can I end with a loud salawat, please? Brothers and sisters, salam alaikum alaik. Um, uh, we've received sad news from Toronto. Marhum Haji Jafali Kara Pirani of Toronto passed away yesterday and was buried today at 8.30 p.m. our time. Um, so please do remember him in your namaz wahshat or hadiyah mayat and please recite the Surah Fatha, Al-Fatha. Allahumma <laughs> Ya Imam Raza, Ya Imam Raza, Yun Mera Dard Eh Dil Ki Daba Dijiye, Ya Imam Raza. Sabil ke ya imam e raza, ya imam e raza, ya imam e raza. Mujhe koi zine huzuri ho pehle karam. Meri kismat mein ho Roshini ye haram Mujhe ko izne huzuri Ho pehle karam Meri kismat mein ho Roshini ye haram Mera soya mukadar jaga dijiye Ya imam e raza Ya imam e raza Ya imam e raza 
یا ایما رضا آپ کے شہر کی روشنی دیکھ لو موت سے پہلے میں زندگی دیکھ لو آپ کے شہر کی روشنی دیکھ لو موت سے پہلے میں زندگی دیکھ لو خواب تعبیر سے اب ملا لیجیے یا امام رضا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا پاک دل کی مرادے سوالی گیا آپ کے در سے نا کوئی خالی گیا پاک دل کی مرادے سوالی گیا آپ کے در سے نا کوئی خالی گیا ہر سے میرا مقدر بنا دیجیے یا امام رضا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا محمد وانی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ السلام علیکم السلام علیکم السلام علیکم السلام علیکم سیدین شاہل عالمین السلام علیکم یا خدیجت القبرا السلام علیکم یا حسن المجتبا السلام علیکم یا ابا عبد الله الحسین وعلى علی ابن الحسین وعلى اولاد الحسین وعلى اصحاب الحسین اقب الفضل العباس واختر زینب وسکین الحسین السلام علیکم یا سائر شہدائی کربلا جمیعا رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ السلام علیکم یا نور اللہ السلام علیکم یا سائر شروط لا الہ الا اللہ السلطان عمل حسن علی ابن موسی رواہ کنت فی عنا و شفی عوالینا یا مولایا یا غریب الغربا و رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ السلام علیکم یا حبت اللہ یا ابن الحسن یا صاحب الاسر والزمان سیدی الامان 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 انتی کنی زمان السلام علیکم یا خلیفت الرحمن السلام علیکم یا شریق القرآن السلام علیکم یا کعبت الایمان السلام علیکم یا امامنا و امام الانتی والجان عجل اللہ فرجک وسهل الله تعالى مخرجك وظهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل الساعة 
وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعوا فيها سبيلا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, as we prepare for Salah in a few minutes, uh, please note that uh, after Salah, please take your seat and Chayan Tabarak will be served in the hall.